Okay. So yesterday we looked into uh, the what are we understood? What is the regression problem and what is the classification problem? Classification problem will have you no know, classes in the y variable, and regression problem will have uh, numbers, real numbers in the target variable. If you have uh, ten different classes to predict, right? Or you know you you got a you got data set with reviews, and uh, you need to predict uh, the review belongs to which class? Which class in the sense out of one to five? Uh, we, what is the rating we need to predict? Is the problem comes under regression or classification? I have a data set with reviews, and I have uh, you now the target variable also, where each review to which class it belongs to is given, and I trained a model, right? I pass this text data and the y variables to the algorithm, and I train train a model. Now I got a new review. I'm going to pass that review to the model, and it need to predict, right? Which class it belongs to? Out of one to five, which class it belongs to? What what is the problem? Is that a regression problem or a classification problem? Classification problem. Anybody disagrees with uh, Lakshmi? Lakshmi Narayan? Anybody agrees? Disagrees? Did you get the problem statement? Should I repeat? Should I repeat? Yes, sir. So the data set is like this. Data set. You can see my screen, right? Okay. The data set, you know, there is some review. There are reviews, and then ratings like one, five. No, five is the best rating and one is the worst rating. A zero is the worst rating. Maybe six ratings there. Right? Three, two, like that. Now, when I get a new review, right? New review is given. I need to predict. You no, know, what is the rating there? What is this problem? Is this problem a problem or a regression problem? Is that a classification problem or a regression problem? classification yes. uh, because it's not with the reviews are like textual and all they're not numbers okay that's that's another problem you know reviews are text we need to convert it to number that will come under nlp natural language processing but when you look at a problem as a whole suppose that you know how to convert this text into numbers okay and uh, once after converting that numbers you may train the model right when you get a new review you will actually pass this review also to the model where the pre processing will convert this text into numbers and then pass it to the model and make prediction right whatever so how do you decide it how how did you decide that this is a classification problem how did you decide this is a classification problem Yeah, it's the because it's not in uh, pure numbers uh, to start with. So that is the reason why. Uh, so you you are thinking like you know reviews are not numbers and uh, maybe ratings are numbers. Most of it is not numbers. That's where you think it is a classification problem. Yeah, that, that's what I thought. Okay, okay, good. A anybody else has got any comments? Why did think, you uh, think classification I problem? Yeah, I think coefficient is not required for this one because it's already as like a proper value for the review one or two or three or four, right? So co coefficient is not required for this one. Coefficient is different. Coefficient uh, will not come. No, will not decide actually whether to whether the problem is a regression problem or not. 
Clover coefficient, right? You are maybe thinking a little more. Let me, you know, let I'll actually reiterate again. So this class is like, you know, we need to get a clear picture on, you know, what two different kinds of problems are. Anybody else has got any comments? So I was saying one statement, right? What you need to predict here? What you need to predict? Rating. Rating, right? In this problem, this uh, salary problem, what you need to predict? Salary. Salary, right? So I said this problem is a regression problem because salary is a real number. Okay. In this side, in this right, I am saying this problem is a classification problem because rating is a class. Rating has got discrete number of distinct values, right? Discrete number of distinct values. Then you call that problem as a classification problem. Whether it is a number or a text, it doesn't matter, right? Maybe rating is like excellent, good. Maybe I know I should put I should put uh, four. That right, excellent. Maybe good. Right, fair. Maybe there is a you know good good and best is also there. You know four maybe the best. Okay. So <clears throat> like this, even you know whether the rating is like a text or number. It doesn't matter. Rating can be like this or like this. Do you agree? Rating can be like this numbers or like this text. Do you agree? Yes, sir. Right. Either way, this problem is going to be a classification problem because the y variable, the one we are trying to predict, is actually having discrete number of values. Whether they are numbers or text, it doesn't matter. If, they are, if the y variable or the one we are trying to predict is a discrete number of values, then you call that problem as a classification problem. This is a classification problem. Okay, this is a regression problem. Very simple. You look at y value and decide whether it is a regression problem or classification problem. No need to look into class, you know, the coefficients or whether all that most of the data is text or not. It, it's not going to decide. Y variable decides whether the problem is a classification problem or a regression problem. Got it? Got it? Yes, sir. Right. So whenever you look at look at the data, you need to decide which problem, you know, what is the problem, and then appropriately algorithm should be used. So for classification, there will be specific algorithms. For regression, there will be specific algorithms. Some algorithms will, will work for both classification and regression both. Okay. So why am I actually trying to show you the difference clearly now? Because Yesterday we built a model. Right? We built a uh, you know ordinary least squares model, and we looked at uh, the relationship between statistics and the you know the machine learning. And we'll see more in uh, linear regression assumptions. We'll see more. Today we'll see a little bit of high-level view of how to measure accuracy. Right? We built a model. But we don't know whether the model is working good or not, right? Once the model is working good, on a new on a new person's data, you can predict salary. Okay, our goal here is to predict salary. So I showed you a classification example because you need to get that clarity. Okay. So for classification, there will be different metrics. Right? What is metric? So no, if a student uh, writes an exam. He or she should get you know 35 or 50 marks to pass, right? That metric is the number count, right? Out of 100, and uh, uh, to see you know maybe military army selections, right? Uh, the person should have 167 centimeters height. That is the you know metric to pass, right? Metric, right? The measure, right? So there should be a way to measure whether the model is working good or not, or not also. For regression problems, there will be different metrics. For classification problem, there will be different metrics. So today we are going to look into regression problems metrics. Okay. So yesterday we looked into 
what are independent variables are input variables are explanatory variables okay these are independent variables which actually decide the dependent variable the target variable generally i use target variable a lot target variable means the y input independent variable means x okay when you say coefficient right ultimately after building the model the coefficients will come it depends on the algorithm if you take linear regression algorithm the equation is like this so there will be coefficients if you take k nearest neighbor algorithm right there is no coefficients at all the coefficients depend on the algorithm we use okay some algorithms will have coefficients some algorithms will not have any coefficients some algorithm will have algorithms will have tree structure okay so it depends on the algorithm whether the coefficient is there is there or not lakshmi nagar did you get that clarity yes yeah, sir i got so yesterday we saw like the process of process how the simple linear regression understands the pattern the pattern recognition is nothing but the coefficients here there will be relationship between the input and output this input and this output there will be relationship we need to form that in, you know that that uh, relationship the farming relationship is the pattern recognition okay there will be many books written on you know the cognitive analytics pattern recognition is all junk only thing the the algorithms do is the finding out the coefficients especially when you talk about deep learning it is going to be a more complex function which actually finds out a function with the, all the coefficients there you need to remember that only one example you need to remember throughout the course that 1000 you know 1000 sft 1 million 2000 sft 2 million 3000 sft 3 million what is the price if i ask you derived an equation saying that you know price is equal to 1000 into sft right that 1000 is the finding that 1000 is the pattern right even in simple linear regression when you have this kind of data right we are finding a coefficient to the uh, experience and we are adding additional constant here mx plus c what is this constant even when you know whenever you multiply with some number there is some gap between each record and other because there are many records there will be will not be a perfect coefficient like one we found in the 1000 sft 2000 sft example do you agree do you agree in real time when you have many records you will not have perfect perfect coefficient for the input variable to generate output variable right how are you generating this equation by using the trained data already existing historical data like a human being right what a human being does we we see scenarios out there when we roam around or we watch movies or you know tv serials or whatever information we get we collect and we put it in our mind and when a situation comes right we assume things or we actually collect data from the past and try to mix and match and assess or you know guess the situation accordingly we behave right that's how we do human beings like that the machine learning algorithms are also going to use the prehistorical data sorry historic data and then try to understand or you know generate an equation a simple linear regression if the algorithm is different the 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 hypothesis function is going to be different so when once you have that equation right i passed this strain data to the algorithm it formed all the equations and solved the equations and found these coefficient because the hypothesis function is like this it it followed that approach if the hypothesis function is different the approach is going to be different this is one simple example this is one simple example there are many algorithms in ai but we took this example because deep learning is based out of this only okay so when you pass a new record with 12.2 years of experience the model is predicting now like a human being we are trying to simulate human beings behavior to the computer will we be able to successful completely may not be right so that's where even the systems became became become intelligent there should be a human being making the final decision okay so it is like it is going to give you it is like a calculator it will give you some calculations automatically done and put it there we can we should look at it as a human being and make a decision okay 
So we saw how actually this equation was generated, or you know, this this equation was generated. I actually plotted this equation. How did I plot? Let me show you that code. Did you get time to look into that code? How did I plot that uh, uh, graph? Did you? Anybody looked at it? Yes, Rama. Good. So whatever I show, right? Just try to look at it. So here, you know, I took the data, and model building is very simple, right? I showed you how to do analysis and all that, right? I I took a synthetic scenario that you know there are different designations. I wanted to see whether designation really you know affect salary or not. We are going to use this feature in multiple linear regression. I'll explain multiple linear regression after we cover the inferential statistics. More inferential statistics are there, you know. ANOVA, chi square, and uh, correlation, correlation coefficients. Once we cover that, right? I'll I'll come back to the machine learning again, and from that point onwards, it is all machine learning only. But I am actually trying to show you the dots and trying to connect them. Okay? This will be a bit confusing for this week, but from next week, right? It is all going to be clear. Okay? So we looked into the designation and salary, and then uh, we took mean and standard deviation and tried to assess. Uh, which designation is actually vulnerable in predicting the salary right this may actually affect your model okay so this is one understanding may be useful may not be useful but statistics is helping us in understanding it so i showed you a little bit of importance of statistics and then you know when miss missing values are there especially these uh, you know distribution plots will be useful when missing values are there you can find out the best values to replace okay so we took this ols the model building is very simple okay? i took ols to the formula interface we call it as even in our language they call it as formula interface what is formula interface there will be a, there will be a parameter for the algorithm which says formula which is named as formula is equal to you pass the target variable tilde symbol input variable plus one more input variable plus one more input variable plus right like that you pass and then say fit okay and say fit when you fit what happens do you remember when you fit what happens so it will generate the equation ah it will actually solve the equations and generate the generate the equation i was actually showing it will solve the equation which equations it will solve hypothesis okay. hypothesis right you have you no know, you have experience and salary it is going to form equations like theta 0 plus theta 1 into 15 is equal to but why theta 0 plus theta 1 which number should this number be multiplied with and how much we should add additional constant to to generate this 85000 which number should multiply 3 and then add additional constant to generate this which number to multiply when you are able to in the historical data you found two numbers that multiplies this and adds and generates y that's it that is the pattern right when you get new experience you take those two numbers take theta 0 theta 1 into the experience sum it you get the prediction okay that predict method is doing that so when you fit the model is finding the equation and it is keeping it in this 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 whatever now i have a question i have passed 32 records here if i pass 32 million records you know if i if i pass you know when i pass 32 records right the size of this model is going to be very small the size of this model object is going to be very small if i pass 32 million records is the size going to increase only one column right experience and salary one input column one output column here 32 records If I pass 32 million records, will the size of this uh, model object increase? I think no, Ram. No, right? Why? Because ultimately, what you are finding the coefficient for experience and how much you should add to generate salary. So there, there is going to be two constants, or or simple equation. It's going to be ultimately 
the model is going to find this equation that's it whether you pass two records or two million records it doesn't matter okay but the problem is going to be when it is fitting right what is it doing it is forming those 32 records 32 equations right do you remember what those equations are should i show you again do you remember what those equations are Do you remember those equations, or should I should I show it again? Oh, y is equal to mx plus c, right? Ah, y is equal to mx plus c equations. So anybody has questions, right? Don't hesitate because I am going slow here because you need to understand these things. If you understand these, right, going forward, it is it's going to become easy. I can go faster, and you can get it easily. I think you know, right? So theta zero plus theta one into fifteen like that. If you have two million records, when you say fit right, do we need more memory or not? When we have two million records or three million records, when I say fit, do I need more memory or not? Are you thinking? Do I need more memory? Memory means RAM, right? ram in the system where this calculation is happening where is it finding the equation this fit operation is happening in ram right when i have 3 million equations do we need more memory or not we need to because it yeah. takes lots of time to do all those calculations yeah it needs lots of memory it need to actually form those equations Two million equations and solve all of them at once, right? So that is the problem. Okay, we are going to solve that problem with gradient descent algorithm. Okay, I'll show you clearly what that problem is and you know how we are going to go with different uh, solvers. And you know from now itself, I started gradient descent. Right? I am going to. I am not going to leave gradient descent till end of the course because that is the key for total AI. linear regression logistic regression and gradient descent algorithms are the key to total a totally a okay believe me you will see what i am actually saying many places right many places even in uh, bigger universities they are not concentrating on these three aspects if you if people if if you know if uh, everybody concentrates on these three right learning a becomes very easy okay learning a becomes very easy so if you say ols and fit if you pass too much data the model will not be able to generate because the fit operation takes lots of ram not because of the model takes lot ultimate model object takes a lot lots of ram this is going to take memory in kbs only not even kbs okay so i took dummy data i predicted and uh, now if you look at this graph i think some yes 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 so on x axis i have taken years of experience on y axis i have taken salary so visualization i am covering along with the ai course we visualization i am not you know covering separately if you look at this i took figure right and plot dot figure and figure size is 8 by 8 okay this figure the 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 picture size is 8 by 8 and then uh, you know salary predicted so a linear model dot predict what i am actually passing here salary data dot experience what is the salary data see this here the data with which the model was trained right the data with which the model was trained that is called as trained data okay generally when we are building models we will have trained data and test data i'll talk about it next week okay this week we just need to know what is trained data okay so i have taken 32 records and passed it to the model and built model right and used the same data to predict what am i doing here i am passing experience only and i am getting predicted salary okay so there is experience the input value there is predicted salary okay there is experience and the actual salary okay i am doing two plots there see this scatter plt dot scatter 
I passed experience and predicted value and experience and salary. When I do that, what is going to happen is they are like, you know, X, Y coordinates, right? This is a, the experience is X coordinate. Predicted salary is Y coordinate. If you look at the data types of experience and predicted salary, they are going to be series objects. Okay, series objects. So first value X1, second value, the predicted value, first value is Y1. X2, Y2, X3, Y3, X4, Y4. Like that, it is going to do dots, right? These dots, this magenta dot. The color I gave is M, okay? So it's going to be, this, this is going to be X1, Y1. This is going to be X2, Y2, X3, Y3, X4, Y4. So for the scattered plot, you need to pass list like an object, list like object. Both lists should have same size. Did you get it? How to do a scattered plot? I'm actually explaining. If you experiment with it, right, you will get it easily. But somebody is new. Did you get it? How did I do this scatter plot? No questions, right? Okay. So the for the salary, right? For the experience and real value. So this is the predicted value. This is the actual value, right? This is the actual value. So I gave the color as C. See this? All these dots, right? They are not in a line. Why? Do you know why? These C green dots, right? They are not in a line like magenta dots. Why? Why they are not in line? Sometimes my question may be dumb, right? You can actually say, why are you asking this question also? Why they are not in line? If you look at the magenta dots, right? They're all in, no, they're all actually aligned, like very perfectly aligned, right? But these magenta dots, they are not perfectly aligned. They are actually scattered all across. Why? Magenta dots are from the uh, the equation, the linear yes. regression equation. Yes. So that's where they are aligned with the lines. Yes. So did you guys get it? What? Uh, no. Keshav. Yeah. So uh, did you guys get it? Why? What he is actually talking about? Yeah, right. Yeah. So, so these, you know, these predicted values, right? When I say predict, what is it doing? It is taking this equation, it is taking this equation, passing the experience, first experience, calculating value, second experience, calculating value, third. This is the linear equation which is actually calculating values. That's where, you know, the predicted values are going to be on the line. But the C green dots are going to be scattered across because that is real values, right? Real experience and real salary. It is going to be scattered only, a little bit, you know, here and there only. We are trying to find a generalized solution. When I say generalized solution, there is no guarantee that all dots are going to be overlapped. See this here? These predictions are very accurate. See, the predicted value and the actual value are very close. Predicted value and actual value. Actual value is on y-axis. The experience is on x-axis. Predicted value is also on y-axis. See that? Do you agree? These two, these two predictions are very accurate. But if you see this prediction or this prediction, they are very not very accurate. Right? Visually, we are trying to understand the accuracy. Okay. Did you get what I am saying? Any questions there? No, right? So now I used a, another you know, method called the plot. If I say plot and pass the x values and y values, I'll get a line. If I say scattered, I'll get plots. These two plots, right, they are taking the same input. These two plots, they're taking the same input, right? Experience and salary, experience and salary. But here it is scattered plot, it is here it is plot, just plot. When you say plot, right, it's going to plot a line. If you say scattered, it's going to do dots, okay? So that's how I actually, and X label, Y label, you already know this, right? this years of experience and salary. And then the X ticks and Y ticks, the scale, I actually decided the scale from zero to 10,000 and 5,000 is the 
stepping right how how to step 0 5000 10000 15000 20000 so you can specify that okay so the arrange method will actually generate a numpy array with the values from here till here stepping 5000 at a time okay this is going to generate values from 0 to 20 stepping two values at a time so you can make the graphs very neat and clean by using these xtx and all that stuff okay if you don't use it right it's going to generate something which may not look that neat okay so you comment out and uh, then try to execute and see so yesterday we have seen some more things like you know the coefficient right the intercept and the coefficient of experience and then standard error which is nothing but standard deviation the t statistic do you remember uh, the z statistic we calculated in the uh, rat example z statistic we create calculated in the rat example do you remember do you remember z statistic we calculated yesterday i did not explain t statistic with an intention because you are going to imbibe a little bit and now i am going to take you a little more further into the subject do you remember the z statistic we used in uh, the rat example should i open again see this here the rat example right the z score for 1.05 is 3 do you agree z score for 1.05 is was 3 do you remember not 0.3% three standard deviations away right that score do you get, are you guys getting it yes ma'am huh? yes no anybody got confused you are silent means you are getting it so what is the z score for this 1.15 how do you calculate z score for that i am going to go back to our uh, our you no know, whatever you no know, statistics and machine learning part again but how to calculate z score for this number mu is equal to 1.2 sigma is equal to 0.05 i know right do, don't don't worry about the total problem you know mean standard deviation and a data point this is the data point 1.15 this is a data point okay so how to calculate z score of this data point z score means uh, 1.15 minus by 1.2 by 0.05 yes thank you so that's going to be uh um um 1.2 1.15 0 10 5 0 5 right right so 0.05 minus 0.05 by 0.05 this is minus 1 the g score for this value is going to be minus 1 right so the g score g score for this one is going to be 1.10 10 minus 1.2 divided by 0.05 that's going to be minus 0.10 divided by 0.05 this is going to be 2 minus 2 this value is going to be minus 2 this for this one the z score is going to be minus 3 let me calculate that also 1.15 minus 1.05 oh, no sorry reverse reverse, reverse. 1.05 minus 1.1 1.2 divided by 0.05. This is going to be uh, minus 0.15 divided by 0.5. 0.05. Right? That's going to be minus 3. So this is three standard deviations away. Right? That 1.05 was three standard deviations away when null hypothesis is true. When null hypothesis is true, null hypothesis means there is no significance of the drug only neurological stimulus is working right in that situation the null the 1.05 which was happened when drug was injected was happening very rarely three standard deviations away if you look at this uh, statistical outcome also if the t value 
T value or Z value are same. I think uh, I showed you that. I showed you that here. See this here. You call uh, the statistic as T statistic when you don't know the standard deviation, population standard deviation. Even if you know the population standard deviation and sample size is less than, you know, less than 30, then you call the same value as T statistic. See the formulas are same. Right? Only the n minus one is different. Even if you don't take n minus one is also fine. Statistics is all about approximation, right? So take the same formula. They named it differently because of this just n minus one to confuse you all that right? they named it differently. Z score or T score are same, okay? As a layman, you can take it, take them as same, okay? So T statistic or Z statistic. Here I am actually showing you the Z statistic, right? So you can say T statistic also because we don't know the population standard deviation. We we calculated this standard you know, standard error by taking 0 0.05, the best approximation of standard deviation. You remember? Do you remember that? See here. We don't know the standard deviation of the population. So whatever we know, we have taken that as the population standard deviation. So this is not a Z score. This is actually T score. Do you, do you agree? Whatever the, you know, the minus three, minus two I calculated. These are T scores, not Z scores. Do you agree with my statement? Yes, sir. Right? So. If you look at this, uh, this whatever the outcome, right? This T score is also Z score only. Okay. So this number, what is this number? 2.7. That means almost close to three. Almost close to three, right? Almost close to three. That means 95% of the times, 95% of the times, null hypothesis is not true. What is null hypothesis here? If you look at this example, right? This is a bit confusing concept, so I'm actually going a little slow. If you look at this example, 99.3% of the times the null hypothesis was not true. Is my statement right? And the rat example, 99.7% of the times the null hypothesis was not true. Do you agree with the statement? Anybody disagrees with my statement? Should I repeat? Guys, 99.7% of the times the null hypothesis was not true. Yeah, it is correct. It is correct, right? So, if I, you know, three, when the z score of a number is three, what I am saying, 99.7% of the times the, the null hypothesis was not true. When the value, the G score or T score is actually close to three beyond two. If it is two, right, 95%. Beyond two and close to three, that means around 99% of the times in null hypothesis is not true. What is null hypothesis in uh, linear regression? What is null hypothesis in linear regression? I when we put an out, output variables are not uh, related. related, not related. That's good, very good. You need to remember every statement I make. You need to remember. It is like a concoction of whatever the whole junk is there. People try to confuse you, but I am actually trying to take everything, you know, in a systematic way. So there is no relationship between input and output. Is the null hypothesis when it is not true 99% of the times. What that means? They are related. The input and output are related. That means here the intercept and the output are related. The co the experience and output are related. The experience is very strongly related. See this 17 is the G-score. Positive G-score 17, right? You have you, if you if your data like anyway it's going to be normal because in here also they are actually trying to take the concept of. Um, Many samples and take means kind of a thing. These are kind of means of the coefficients. Okay, we'll not go into those details now. But if you do a normal plot, three standard deviation is going to be like within that curve. 17 means uh, very far. That's where the p value is going to be zero. Here, using the z score, we actually calculated p value. Do you remember that? Using the z score, we calculated p value. How did we calculate? 
9.7% of the times it is not happening so 0.3% of the times it is happening and if it is beyond right area under the curve is 1 right i did area under the curve is 100 or 1 it doesn't matter okay if you say 1 right it is 0 0.997 if you say 100 it's going to be 99.7 i subtracted but if it is beyond that uh, three standard deviations or four is four standard deviations right it is going to be almost 100 percent right so four standard deviations also the rule is there sigma rule right so it's going to be zero numerator is zero so the p value is zero that's how you got the p value here got it the p value zero how did we got it what is this t statistic why are we calling it a calling it as a t statistic because Whenever you build a model, you always take a sample. You will not take population and try to build the model. You always take sample because when population ha you, you, you have got access to population, that means the, the data is not going to grow anymore. No need to predict. Already you have data, already you have inputs and outputs. That is the population, right? So data will not grow, no need. So it is always going to be a sample. Right? You are going to take multiple samples. Suppose that you took multiple samples and tried to build a model. You got these coefficients. Right? And these coefficients you have got this much standard deviation or standard error. And the p value is like this. right? The t statistic based on t statistic, we calculated p value. And the p value is you know, close to zero. That means these two features are very important. Now hypothesis is false. We reject an null hypothesis. I am actually putting stress on p value null hypothesis because from tomorrow, I'll actually show you the inferential statistics, more inferential statistics. You need to understand this and remember because when you look at uh, uh, SciPy model, SciPy, SciPy package, SCYPy, SciPy package, all the terminology is going to be around this only. Okay, so to understand that, I am actually trying to. And then we have looked into the 95% confidence interval. How how this number can oscillate? may oscillate when data changes when the sample changes this data this coefficient may oscillate between these two numbers and these two numbers right this whole thing we understood yesterday okay now any questions so far i'll move on if no questions just one second sir. yeah so the, now the t score uh, for intercept is because it is less than three mm -hmm. so from that point of view we say that the uh, it is within that 97.8% uh, mm, uh, or whatever it is. I think, I, I think you are still in a bit confusion, right? So what I said is it is beyond 95. Right? Two standard deviation. If a numbers, right? This is a number in the data point. Sorry, this is one data point in all the data. Right? Sure. Why am I saying this is a data point? You took multiple samples. Each time you try to build a model, you got different coefficient. Okay. We are looking at one coefficient of those all different coefficients. Did you get my point? Yeah. Okay. So this is one, one, one. We can consider this as one sample coefficient. Ah, one samples uh, the linear regression coefficient, linear regression algorithms coefficient. Okay. Sure. Yeah. And then we are trying to plot a graph for all those coefficients, all those different samples and their coefficients. We are trying to plot a graph. This this data point is falling at a 2.2.7 standard deviation, 2.7 z-score. What is 2.7? Somewhere here, right? Somewhere here, 2.7. Sure. Somewhere here. That means what? It is beyond 95 percent. Beyond 95 percent. Right? Right. right. Beyond 95 percent means 95 percent of the times. This coefficient was not happening when null hypothesis is true. Null hypothesis is true means where the there is no relationship between the input and output. I'll talk about that also in a moment. Okay, I don't want to confuse you guys, so I'm actually going slow bit by bit. Okay, so 90 95 percent of the times this coefficient was not happening when null hypothesis is true. That means the p-value you can calculate 100 minus whatever that percentage is going to be like 90 percent. I think it is 99% uh, uh, only. 0, 1 means, right? 99% of the times, this is actually 99. This value here, the, the, the area under the curve is going to be 99. If you take you know, this side and that side, for that, right? It's going to be 99. 
so because of that right what we are saying is now high positive situation 99% of the times this number is happening that means we can reject the null hypothesis that mean right we we the the the, the coefficient is significant this this intercept is significant that's what we are saying you said inside 90 said 99.7% i am saying outside 99% of the time right? did, did you get the difference in the way we are talking yeah so basically you mentioned that the key point to look at is 95% ah. outside that or not yeah, because 0 0.05 is the significance level. Yes. 0, 0.0 or 5 percent is the significance level. If more than 5 percent of the times the null hypothesis situation uh, it is happening, right? This coefficient is falling into, right? Then uh, no, the coefficient is not significant. It is actually like right, no, the, the, there is no strong relationship between the intercept and coefficient. You got the point, right? This is a bit confusing thing. Got the point, yes, right? Yes, sir. So now, if you know, stay there, right? I am actually going to make one more statement. Don't get confused. I'll, I'll actually know why, how, how, how we got this many number of these intercepts, and how did we got this t value and p value? I'm going to explain that. Even if you don't understand, right? Don't worry, right? I am actually trying to dump what I know, right? So don't, don't get confused. So I said that. This is one of the coefficients, one of the coefficients of the linear regression equation, which were generated many of many linear regression equations of many linear regression equations. These are one of the coefficients of many linear regression equations. I have got one data set, right? I have got experience, right? And salary, right? I have one data set. And I said, you know, initially when I said that I'm going to form equations, form equations and solve all, all of them and find one ultimate equation, right? I said something like that. Now I am saying there are many equations. Out of those many equations, this is one coefficient time, one coefficient I'm saying, right? So how can, how will we generate it? What is null hypothesis for, uh, for linear regression? No relation between experience and salary, right? Right. This is the null hypothesis, right? When I say no relation between experience and salary, I take experience uh, one year, five years, two years, three years, right? One year salary is ten thousand. Right? This is original data, okay? This is original data. Five years experience fifty thousand. And two years experience 20,000, three years experience 30,000. This is the data. When I say the null hypothesis is true, what that means is even if I shuffle salaries, keep the experience as it is, shuffle salaries, we should get same accuracy. Do you agree? The relationship should not change. The strength in relationship should not change. Do you agree with my statement? When null hypothesis is true, if null hypothesis is true, right? No relationship, no strong relationship between experience and salary. Let me show you. Let me show you one more example. This is the original data, right? Statistics is confusing. Statistics, basic nature is confusing. If you are confusing, right? Just ignore it. Don't be worried about it. This is not the end of the world. We have whatever we are covering here is just 5% or 2% of the total AI. There is a lot in AI, okay? Don't get confused and don't get discouraged, okay? So salary experience. I am actually trying to see how much I can imbibe the statistics into your mind, okay? Even if not, that's going to work. We are going to go into mathematical approaches. When we start machine learning, we are going to go into pure mathematical approaches. So this is the original data, right? So I said that, when null hypothesis is true, even if you shuffle salary, keep experience as it is, shuffle salary and build a model, the model should work the same way. Okay. Why did I make that statement? Let me try to show you one more data set. This is another data set. The blue data, data set is something else, which is not related to my orange data set.
see this data set. If you take null hypothesis on this data set, is the true? No relationship between experience and salary on the blue data set. Do yeah. you agree? Huh? Yeah. yeah. Agree, right? Yes. So in another way, in another way, if I say like keep experience on the blue data set, I am talking about blue data set, right? Keep experience fixed. Shuffle salary. Try to build a model. Keep experience like that. Shuffle salary. Build a model. Keep experience like that. Shuffle salary and build a model. Will the model's accuracy change? No, right? No, right? Yeah. Yes, right? sir. No. Right? Because you know, in this particular situation, if you if you take this kind of a data and try to build a model, do that experimentation, right? Take experiences, randomly generated experiences between one and fifteen, and give salary, right? Take two NumPy arrays and create a data frame and try to build a model and look at the p-value. You will get a p-value which is big. More than 0.5 because the the coefficients are not significant. They are not even though you build a model, you get the coefficients. They are not that important. You know, it's like even if the coefficient is not there, you can even if the model is not there, even if the weak equation is not there, you can predict any experience. You are giving the same salary. It's a good company, right? So no, no disparity, <laughs> right? Got it. Statistical concept, did you get it? So how did we got the, you know, these numbers, right? These p-values and p-statistics based on this idea, right? Suppose that you took this data set and then shuffled salaries, built a model, try to look at the coefficients. Shuffled salaries, built a model, try to look at the coefficients. Try like that you built many, right? First you built the original data model. You got these coefficients. These are the original data coefficients original data model coefficients then you are actually shuffling the data and trying to build models and find out coefficients that's where you got many coefficients that's where you got standard error that's where you got t score that's where you got t score this is actually signifying whether this value is you know good or not because when you your your you know alternate hypothesis is that these coefficients are real are this data, you know, this experience has got real strength in predicting salary. That is your original thing. But null hypothesis is saying it is not true. When it is, when null hypothesis situation is true, what that means? Even if you shuffle the y value, it is okay. Any experience can predict any salary. That's what the null hypothesis indirect statement. Does it make sense? Last five minutes. Maybe seven minutes class, you ignore it. Take out from the record if you don't understand. Understood? Understood? Any, anybody understood what I'm actually talking about? Any questions there? So one, one question, sir. Yeah. So in uh, so for lean, uh, so null always. Uh, um, there is no relationship between input and experience, uh, input and output. Uh, yes. Is it always or for this example? It is always. Not taken that? It is always. It is always. Okay. It is always based on that. The p value is calculated. T statistic and p value is calculated. That's what I'm actually explaining, explaining right now. It is always like that, but that's where you get t value. So to calculate, you no, know, to calculate z score or t score and p value, you need sampling distribution of means, right? How do you calculate that sampling distribution of means? I'm actually trying to explain. On real data, you build a model and find coefficients, keep them aside. Then you shuffle the data and try to find out many other coefficients and then calculate standard error right? and the p-value, you know, t-statistic, and then you find out the confidence interval and all that. So why this struggle? Because data may change. When data changes, are these numbers are these is the is the understanding the pattern recognition is going to work well or not that's the struggle is all about we know that linear regression algorithm is there and it is working and we are using it but initially when the statisticians were actually trying to build these models right their question was i built a model i have found coefficients 
ये आर दिस कोएफिशिएंट्स गोइंग टू हेल्प इन एवरी सिचुएशन आर नॉट दैट्स द क्वेश्चन सो दिस स्टैटिस्टिकल यू नो टेस्ट्स विल एक्चुअली हेल्प इन यू नो अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट वी विल यूज दिस नंबर्स इन कमिंग क्लासेस आल्सो राइट एंड व्हेन आई व्हेन आई एक्सप्लेन लीनियर रिग्रेशन एज्यूमशंस आई विल एक्चुअली यूज अ लिटिल बिट ऑफ इट इवन इफ यू डोंट अंडरस्टैंड एवरीथिंग ऑफ इट दैट इज फाइन बट इफ यू हैव क्वेश्चंस आई कैन आंसर Uh, sir one comment uh, just to just for the better visualization uh, uh, for the other example where uh, you mentioned salary is constant uh-huh. uh, so if if we take that uh, then in that case the p value will be zero uh, no p value is going to be big number if you take this kind of data set and build a model and look at summary your p value is going to be big number not not p value the t t for uh, text T value will be close to zero. Yeah, close to zero. So that that indicates that uh, basically uh, the variation will not be, or maybe it is uh, null 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 hypothesis becomes null hypothesis is accepted. True. Yeah, accepted because there is no relation because it's almost constant. So maybe that's the reverse way of visualizing things. Um, yes. Yeah. Yes. See, you know, from batch to batch, I my explanation is also improving. I think. I don't know how confused you are, but you know these concepts were not explained like this in previous batches. So I I generally don't prepare. I come and then start you now thinking and explaining. That's kind of a problem with me. Sometimes it comes good, sometimes bad. I think today I made more sense. If you get time, right, try to take you know build a data set, prepare a data set with random numpy random methods and all that. and you know take the constant salaries and build a model and come up with that tomorrow we'll see how the p values are okay even if you don't understand that's fine you can build a model right at least you'll get some experience with code right? so somebody take take that exercise and do it and uh, tomorrow we'll see that so if we are good right i'm i'll go to i'm going to move a little forward okay so i think we are good so let's let me move forward so you see this here the r square score is actually 0.908 and adjusted r square score is 0.09 0.905 what these two numbers are saying is the model is working good i'd say 90.8% accuracy 90 90.5% accuracy the model is working with 90.8% accuracy okay what are these numbers these are called as matrix r square score and adjusted the r square score are matrix so what is matrix let us look at it if you look at this graph there is a predicted value and actual value there is a gap right right that is error. okay so numbers for for some experiences the gap is very low for some experiences the gap is very high right so individually each record you can actually measure but as a whole how the model is working you should actually understand so these numbers right r square score adjusted r square score like will explain as a whole the total data set on total data set the how the model is working it is explaining that 90% accuracy it is working with adjusted r square 90.5% so why two matrix we'll see that in a moment okay you got it right what this r square score it is saying that 90% accuracy okay r square score adjusted r square score are going to be there on regression problems for classification there will be different matrix okay we we'll ex- we we'll ex- i'll i'll explain classification when we talk about classification That's bigger let us look at the matrix here on a regression problem we are going to look at matrix so <clears throat> regression error matrix error is also called as residual this is a term you need to remember residual okay error is also called as residual actual value minus predicted value is the error or residual what is the actual value let me try to look at the code here oh there is one more point i forgot to explain see this here if i if i do reg plot right there is c barn c barn is one more package if you go up c barn is a one more package to visualize it is a wrapper on top of matplotlib which actually makes graphs very 
you know visually looking good and easy to draw okay so in seaborn there is a method called as reg plot regression plot and you pass input variable and the output variable it takes only one okay and then the data set it actually does the same plot what i did here right the dots and the you know magenta dots and you know magenta dots were not there that line but if you look at it carefully see there is some uh, you know lighter area do you see the lighter area here what do you think that lighter area is do you have any idea what that lighter area is with the bell curve part okay you know if you look at this right you know when you look at the numbers here there is 95% confidence interval right that means the number the equation may oscillate a little bit right when the when the data changes right the equation may oscillate a little bit for all those different different combination values right that guy actually tried to do the line plot and he kept it in a you no know, green you no know, light color so this line may oscillate like that when data changes the reg plot is showing fun i am showing you the, we are not going to use it anywhere okay but i am just showing you for fun so this uh, 95% confidence interval is different numbers different equations right in that range there will be different numbers and different equations right so all those equations if you try to do lines right they will actually come in that area okay now the error okay so i took the model i predicted right when i say the predict right it is actually giving it was actually giving me a series object on series object if i say dot values i will get a numpy array okay and then i took you know i in the salary data i added a new column called as predicted values predicted salary actual salary predicted salary so y and y cap we call it as y cap in machine learning y cap okay and now i am going to calculate error here see this residual the difference between the actual value and the predicted see this the prediction is very close 85000 salary it predicted 85400 500 maybe right 500 error second record it actually predicted 1600 in minus 2 no minus 2900 no 1700 so there is error in each record right you can actually sum all the errors and get an error right get get total error sigma sigma i is equal to 1 to m m number of record always say m in the data set n number of columns in the data set input features n number of records m that is a term, that is a convention m by n matrix in, you know m number of rows n number of columns okay so sigma i is equal to 1 to m you can say y minus y cap but if you look at the data there are some negatives and positives they may get cancelled and you may not get the magnitude properly when you are calculating error right whether it is positive or negative both are error the residual whether it is positive or negative it is error when you try to look at it, total data error right negatives and positives both should be considered if you sum like all these right there will be cancellation effect and some negatives and some positives may get cancelled suppose that you are getting minus 500 plus 500 minus 500 plus 500 minus 500 plus 500 like that right 32 records 15 records gave minus 500 15 records gave plus 500 when you sum right you get zero do you agree do you agree did you get my statement yes sir yes sir that means the total error is not representing the error even though there is error the error is getting nullified because of that we do squares squares and sum the same thing i think in the variance right we are actually doing squares and sums similarly here also we are squaring and summing each error we are squaring and summing so we get residual you know residual sum of squares we call it as y minus y cap whole square sigma i is equal to 1 1 to m is called as residual sum of squares you can represent error using this number also but this number is going to be between 0 and infinity do you agree any time residual sum of sum of squares can be negative no 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 
so that number is going to be between zero and infinity. That is one statement, right? Regime, you know, <clears throat> if I have to say my model is working good, should the number be close to zero or uh, a big number? Close to zero. Close to zero, right? So because y and y cap for all the records are close to each other, you get all the numbers close to zero, and total is also going to be close to zero. But how close? You don't know, right? If the data, right? Suppose that, you know, let me try to take a scenario here. Here, I have got eighty-five thousand, twenty-three thousand, like that. But at a particular data set, if the target variable is like target variable value is between zero and one. Right, you are trying to zero and one value. Um, zero and one value. One example I am actually looking at. Or uh, maybe you know the, the you know the 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 thickness of a cloth. You are trying to calculate, right? By taking the material as input, right? Different materials as input, and thickness of the Cloth is the output, and you are trying to predict. You pass material, the model will predict the thickness of the cloth. So in that case, right, this thickness is always going to be between zero and one centimeter, or the zero and one milli milli millimeters, right? Suppose that. And in that case, if you calculate y minus y cap, is it going to be close to zero? Sigma, you know, this y minus y cap whole square sigma is equal to one to m. Let me try to draw. Let me draw this and show you. Maybe. So there is a data set. There is a data set where there is material, right? And then thickness, right? Suppose that the thickness is between zero and one, like zero point one, zero point five, zero point three, zero point two, for different materials, the cloth, right? Zero point two. Like that, yeah. You you built a model. Now you predicted y cap, y cap of thickness, right? You are predicting, and the values are like this. The prediction value, predicted values are also going to be between zero and one. Zero point two, zero point four, zero point two, zero point one, like that. Now y minus y cap is going to be what is this residual or error? This is going to be uh, y minus y cap means this is y, this is y cap. Minus zero point one, zero point one, zero point one, zero point one like that. Now you square this, right? Squared error. I am actually trying to explain why R square score and adjusted R square score came in. When you have this, uh, you know, squared error and uh, you know residual sum of error and these metrics, right? Why did we need to go? For R square error, I am actually trying to explain that. So here, what is it going to be? 0.01, 0.01, 0.01, 0.01, right? And when you sum all of them, right, it's going to 0.04. Is it close to zero? Is this number close to zero? Residual sum of squares for this model. Is this close to zero? Yes. Yeah, yes. But uh, do you see the model working good? If you look at the You know y cap values and uh, y values. Do you see model working good? We are trying to, you know, predict the thickness of a cloth. Okay, and uh, when you are making predictions, right? Zero uh, point one thickness error. Is that a good error on each record? Is that a good error? Yes. No. No. Anybody says yes. Is is the model working good? Not working good, right? The the thickness itself is zero point five. If you get an error, right, you may get zero point zero zero one kind of error. very less error you should get. Right, you are getting point one error. But when you look at the squared error, right, it is actually close to zero. You may think that the model is working good by looking at the squared error we may get confused that the model is working good even though the model is not working good got it that's where the squared error is not enough to measure the measure the accuracy of a regression model squared error 
metric is not enough to measure the accuracy of the regression model squared error is one of the metrics to measure the accuracy but data set like with y values very small numbers the model may confuse you even though the model is not working well it may look like it is working well got it any questions any questions but on our data set right on this data set on our, no what the salaries data set you can take squared error also it may look no it may it may be too big or too small if it is coming close to zero that means model is working good so it's a big number the model is not working good maybe you know square error works here on this particular data set but this kind of data set the square error will not work that's where we are going to go over go for a better accuracy measure called as r square score and adjusted r square score what are those i will explain in a moment so residual sum of squares is square error a total sum of squares there is another metric called as total sum of squares if you see this right this is y bar this is not y cap i think here you can magnify this see this this is y cap okay bar what is y bar what is y bar i think we saw x bar right somewhere y bar is the mean of all values right all the y values so you are trying to you are trying to look at the distance between each record each salary and the mean of the salary okay and you are actually summing it 1 to m you are actually summing the squaring you can imagine that you know you are trying to predict the mean as the predicted value you did not built a linear mode linear regression model you took mean of all y values and saying that that is the prediction then this is going to be the error do you agree did you got my statement that's all but you are actually taking mean of all by all salaries and saying that is the salary for any record coming into the data set i asked 12 point you know 5 years experience you said mean of the salaries current existing salaries as the prediction i said 2 years experience mean of the salary is the prediction prediction so it that's a can i call it as a dumb model this is intelligent model because it understood the pattern by using an equation and it calculated y cap right and this is a dump model can i say that can i say that yeah yes sir because it's not considering the experience and the variation because of yeah, experience yeah yeah right i can call this as a dump model now r square metric is dependent on that so r square score is the distance between the tss and rss dump model and the intelligent intelligent model dump model and intelligent model right so if the distance between dump model and intelligent model is close to each other what will happen to the numerator if tss and rss are close to each other what will happen to the numerator is close to zero close to zero It's close to zero right so r square score will come zero what that means if uh, the tss and rss are close in terms of business or the model what it means if tss and rss are close to each other the number calculated using this formula and the number calculated using this formula are close to each other that means what uh, there is no too much difference between predicted and actual value so the intelligent model and your dumb way of calculating mean and trying to predict there is no difference that means your model is not working good can i say that can i say that right tss minus rss is coming close to zero that means the model is not working good whatever intelligent effort you kept is not useful okay that me you know r square score is close to zero the model is not good suppose that rss is actually coming close to zero rss is coming close to zero right this rss is coming close to zero what will happen to this this formula tss divided by tss you get right 
right? Almost TSS divided by TSS. Then it's going to be one. So RSS is close to zero. That means what? The model is working good, right? So RSS is close to zero. That means model is working good. That means uh, no, the, the R square score value should be close to one. That's what has happened with our model also. See this here. The R square score is actually 90.90. That means the model is working good. I said the model is working good because this formula is actually giving us the clarity. Got it? Why R, no, R square score measure is needed? Now we are comparing TSS and RSS, right? This is when you know it is going to be more reliable. You know, the number is always going to be between 0 and 1. If the number is close to 1, the model is working good. If the number is close to 0, the model is not working good. We can say that. Okay. Any questions here? Okay, good. So adjusted R square. Then there is a problem with R square score also. When you have too many features, right? Generally, R square score tends to go close to one. Or you know, a little bit, a little bit it adds. Even if it is now, if you look at this, right? Even if it is, uh, it should be like 0.95, 90.5. It is going, you know, 0 0.003, a little more, okay? Because of number of input features, more input features. So to nullify that, right? The formula is actually mathematically modified a little bit. One minus R square, m minus one, you know, one n minus m minus n minus one. N is the n is the number of features. So with the number of features increasing, right? What will happen? The denominator, the denominator decreases. M is the number of records, 100 records. Suppose that there are 100 records and uh, 10 features. Okay. So you you included 10 more features. This this became 20. That means what? 100 minus 20 minus one. Denominator is going to reduce. Previously it was around 89 when feature number of features are 10. When number of features are 20, it became 79. That means denominator is small. That means this value is going to be big. And one minus a big number is going to be a small number. So it is going to nullify. Right? What if, when you add new features into the data, this formula is going to nullify a little bit. It is a mathematical trick that applied by looking at many other examples. Okay. So this is an adjusted R square. Adjusted R square tries to nullify additional features effect on the R square score. Okay. Tomorrow I'll start with the same you know, concept and show you some more examples like mean squared error, root mean squared error, and all that. And uh, multiple linear regression will not cover tomorrow. Um, I'll start. I'll go back to statistics again for two three days. We'll cover statistics and then you know we'll come back to multiple this multiple linear regression and we will be into machine learning right and linear regression assumptions and all that okay any questions i can stop recording i think